Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me today is... The Adam Glass. With you every day, Pat. Well, I mean, it's every day. It's more that we do. interesting yeah. if I say with me today. Yeah. Well, but you're, you're not with me, me like, every day because, you, you, like, we only I record know. this, like, once every two weeks. Yeah, but you're introducing me like I'm today's special guest. But I'm every day. But every you episode are special always guest. special to I'm me. I'm always Adam. special. That's very, that's very kind of you. Or insulting. I don't know. <laughs> All right, this I, week and we I were talking about. I wanted to singing, but I couldn't think of a song. <laughs> You light up my eyes. I wanted to do the one that goes, uh, the honesty's too much. I could, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember it. And I can't remember Any how it goes. Um, At least you just do a podcast. Touch, Let's just forget this whole. We... Let's, Let's forget grab... the sometimes podcast when we touch, about the Criterion Collection yeah. and just sing elevator music. Yeah, yeah. Sappy love songs would be great. Um, no. The podcast, Sappy love songs, the podcast. Yeah, um, don't even like review them or come, <laughs> come up with some them. terrible just review. Just do of really them. bad editions of them. them. Yeah, um, and yeah, Pat, congratulations! Just... You just invented YouTube. Oh, and <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Um, I'm sorry, I did that. Yeah. So anyway, oh, and then now this the comment week... section will just be a mess. Yes, this week we're uh, we're talking about the 1953 French film, uh, Henri Georges Clouseau's uh, prior work to the film we talked about last week, um, which was Diabolique. This week it is his masterwork, The Wages of Fear. Um, <laughs> should I? Yeah, I call yeah. it I call Diabolique his masterwork too. But they really it's are true both, though. They're both amazing movies. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we watched Diabolic last week, and if you uh, if you missed that episode, don't listen to it until you watch the movie. <laughs> so you know, ideally, don't listen to any of these until you watch the movie. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, let, if we get down to brass tacks, you just need to not. You need to watch before we do. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or before you, and you know what I mean. Before we talk, I'm having I'm yeah. having trouble with the words today. Yeah. But you That's need a to, you need it's... to just watch the movie before you listen yeah. to the podcast. If you're yeah. not doing that, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Seriously, um, get it together, dude. Get it together, man. Oh, this movie, this movie, uh, like Diabolique, was remade. Um, Diabolique remade at least once. Um, this movie was remade, I think, like three times. There was like a made-for-TV version of it. And then um, in 1958, uh, it was remade uh, called Violent Road. Um, <laughs> I like that name. Like somebody said things very literally. 77, it was remade uh, called Sorcerer, which I really... What? It, a movie coming out in 77 called Sorcerer, I would ex- expect some sort of uh, poorly done uh, visual effects heavy fantasy movie. Not, not a movie about driving a truck. Um, but, and at its heart, that's what this movie is about, driving a truck. But it it's, is. It's, it's about very suspensefully driving a truck. <laughs> driving a truck. Um, uh, one more fact before we get to the, uh, before we get to the intro music. Uh, this film was actually accused of anti-Americanism, and many scenes were cut for the U.S. release, which is why well, it a is lot of anti-American, people... but that's okay. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's anti, yes, it's absolutely It's accurately anti-American. anti-American. Yes, yeah. Uh, Time Magazine in 55 actually called it a picture that is surely one of the most evil ever made because of its anti-Americanism. Uh, but we will, we will get into why that's justified later, but ruminate on that as you listen to our great intro music by Jonathan Haidt. one time I've, uh, I guess the second time so far in, in 40 episodes that I've actually intru- kind of introduced the music. Uh, so, uh, 
Which we really probably need to do every time. Yeah, we really do. But but thank you again to Jonathan Haidt for recording that. And uh, yeah, you you're you're the best. If I decide to Jonathan. add a little credits thing at the end, I apologize to the readers for repeating information. You probably ever. Well, <laughs> but you were probably also going to have to throw some advertisement stuff at the beginning or end or something. Uh, something so. you know, if people want to start paying for it um, or paying us to do it. Anyway, uh, so we are watching The Wages of Fear, uh, which is a much more dramatic... It's a very dramatic movie, but The Wages of Fear makes it sound like it's dramatic in a way that it's not dramatic. <laughs> but, right, it makes it sound more... It sounds more like a horror movie yeah, yeah. than than Diabolique yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's because Diabolique is French and you don't know what it means. Uh, no, I, it, it, re- it means... Um, I don't know. Tacos? <laughs> tacos, yes. Uh this movie, uh, this movie is, uh, it's a very suspenseful movie. And it's weird because it's one of the few movies I've ever seen that is suspenseful without shock. Um, Diabolique is, oh. is more of a horror movie. Uh, and is... Well, it's, yeah, it's more of, it's certainly more of a, more of a shocking movie. Yeah, time. yeah. Whereas this... Um, yeah. This is, Go you know, there are there are surprising elements of this film. There are certainly things that happen in this movie that I wasn't expecting to happen. There are there are, there are shocking elements to this movie, and and um, you know, mo- decision decisions the filmmakers made that that really, you know, they 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 push a limit on on an audience. But uh, it's it's done so. Yeah, it's not horror. It's not like jump scares. It's not. It's not. Let's let's play the music low and and have nothing happen for five minutes and then have someone say boo um it's right and then make make yeah. pat peace so it's so it's not it's not suspenseful in your normal horror way it's not suspenseful in your normal thriller way which is you know some danger still you know like a horror movie it's some some greater danger after our main characters the danger here is a truck full of nitroglycerin that the characters are driving so the danger, right? right. Their their danger is themselves, is with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. It, it is them. Now, here's what I will say though. I just want to get this off the top too. Okay. I I very I, if I have to compare this and Diabolic, I like Diabolic more. Yeah. Um, this one is very suspenseful, but you feel the two hours. Yes. Diabolic, I did not feel it. It like it that flew yeah. for me. This one felt like two hours. Yeah, and and that's a good thing and a bad thing. I'm not saying it's the, a well, terrible thing. It it helps like, that this one it is actually hard to watch. You know, this is this is over two and a half hours, and that extra half hour really really feels it too. Um, yeah, because it's and like I just really started getting like antsy. Yeah, this is a full because, half hour like, longer yeah. than Diabolic. It's 147 minutes, so it's nearly three. So, but yeah, it definitely feels the the pacing's a little slower, and you know, it, it draws it out to make it more suspenseful. And you know, we're a full hour into the movie before we even get on the trucks, so it's Mm-mm. and you really feel that half an hour too. Yeah, like that's a really boring half an yeah, hour yeah, for the, me. The beginning part is is not, but you know, you need you need that establishment to get the characterization down. So. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not against yeah. what they did. Yeah, I, I just found that um, I this one did not move for yeah. me the way that uh, Diabolique did, and that's one of the big strong points of Diabolique was that it was so well paced, yeah. and this one did not feel as well paced. Yeah, I think one. So I noticed if, if I had to find a problem with this movie. Um, you know, we start with all of our main characters in this little town in South America, in the Andes somewhere, probably. Um, and they're all there, and they're all down on their luck trying to get <laughs> yeah, out. I li- yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to comment on the fact yeah. that I love the fact that it's just South, South America. America. Yeah, the original novel takes place in Guatemala, I think, but they don't bother to actually name anything um, with any specifics for the film version. Um but everyone's there, and it's a very international group. It's like Casablanca. It's just everybody's uh, everybody's from somewhere different. Um, but uh, there's no real justification for why anyone's there. What were their motivations for coming there to begin with? Well, we get 
kind of a little bit later. Well, with with Joe because, showing up, maybe. But yeah, well, but we also get with um like later when um what is his Mario is the name of the main character. Mario's our main right? character. Luigi's the Italian. Um, he uh, Joe is the he, other. He um. But yeah. the reason I, we do get a little bit out of him because we get into him saying like you know he t- took a boat and then took a. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like almost everybody who's there got there on accident. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They ran out of money yeah. to get out of town. Yeah, like, Joe was on his way somewhere else, and this was the only ticket he could afford. So he ended up here. Um, yeah, and I, you get that impression out of a yeah. lot of them, or they came for some job yeah. that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and But I find I find their reasons for being there to be believable. I don't have any problems with that. Yeah. Per se, well, I, guess I have right. problem. But you, I have... just, I, yeah, I just, it's just the pacing is a bit slow yeah. for me. Yeah, it's, it is. I, very I slow really, pace. I notice it, it as we've been going through the movies that we've watched for this. I have noticed that there are movies that lose me a little bit because they start moving too slow. Yeah, and I can't cope with it. Yeah, I'm an idiot, is what I'm saying. There... I can't. I don't have the wherewithal yeah. to make it through. We've seen we've seen long yeah. movies as part of this that don't feel long because their pacing is so great or their story is so engrossing uh, that you just don't feel it. Like Seven Samurai, you don't feel that. Right? Yeah, that's, you don't feel that's over three hours and you don't feel it. This movie right. is you're, you get to the intermission, you've been like, yeah. you're, and you say, "How long have I been watching yeah. this?" This movie is two hours and thirty seven minutes long, and you start to feel you that way. Feel it. Yeah. And and that's that's why we talked last time about how in my mind I can deal with the idea of remakes for this. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why I can deal with that. Yeah, because you feel like this could be a tighter movie. And it's still, yeah, it's still somebody a great could movie, do but it could a be better a job. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I th- make this yeah. Yeah. That's one one interesting thing that this was the movie that Clouseau made before Diabolique. As far as suspense movies go, this could even feel kind of like a dry run of the idea of suspense. Um, right, like how to toy with people. Yeah, how to toy with people. Um, but yeah, uh, this movie opens with a... Uh, it's actually, I think, uh, was it Sam Pickenoff? Treasure of the Sierra Madre, I think, uh, borrowed the opening of this. It's just a little native boy uh, playing with two... Uh, to uh, cockroaches and then uh, zoom out and someone's selling ice cream which the boy can't afford but he still looks and goes and looks at the ice cream and he comes back and a vulture is eating his cockroaches um, so it's this this chasing dreams establishment uh, and you know that's that's kind of what this movie is about that, that people man in general loses sight of what he has when he's chasing what he wants that he can't get. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, so this movie, uh, we start off slow build, you know, meet everybody. Uh, Joe's kind of a, a con man. Uh, Mario is, is everyday French. <laughs> Luigi's. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just yeah. French. Yeah. That's really, that's what we get for Mario. He's, he's, uh, you know, he's got his lover who is played again by Varric Clizzo, who we saw in the last movie. Uh, uh, she uh, she works in the local um, in the local saloon uh, where no one can afford to drink because no one has any money except for the Americans and those lucky enough to get a job from the Americans. And they Americans. don't and they don't drink in the yeah and so. they don't drink in the in there because they have their own walled off portion of the city. That's that's one of my favorite one of my favorite interactions of this movie is when after Joe shows up and Mario is showing him around. And he, he points to the wall and says, the other side is for the Yanks. And the uh, Joe responds, oh, there's Americans here. Because he hasn't met any Americans. Because they're all inside their wall. And and one one spot where we might get a subtle jab at anti-Americanism is, uh, or jab of anti-Americanism, I suppose, um, is, is Mario's response, there is, there's oil here. Wherever there's oil, there's Americans. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and but then we, we we get into what we talked a little bit about in the yeah. last episode before we gave up, which was 
it's kind of especially Americans at that time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a we're not we're not. This is not propagating some falsehood about America. No, no, it's not. It's an American is... business practices. Especially, I mean, we're talking about a time when we're not that far away from yeah. waging a war solely so that. Uh, you know, Dole can have a monopoly on fruit production. Yes, yes, exactly. This is this is a banana republic era, um, and you know, it's not. It's we could say it's not significantly better now, but uh, but in this, well, yeah, I'm not. I, where we, I, yeah, yeah, where we so, are for but, this movie, it's certainly true to life that an American oil company, whenever it has a problem, throws money at it, uh, blames the victims for for the fire, um, and. Uh, and you know, just hires whoever has the least to lose in order to do, to do a dangerous mission, and then pay them you know two grand to do it. Right. Well, I mean, the only thing I gotta say is at least the do you get this weird thing out of the boss, yeah. the, the main head dude, yeah, O'Brien. where he is, he actually kind of says a, kind of almost a borderline noble thing. Which is you're going to just pay him and say thank you. Yeah. Whoever does this for you, you're not going to moan. You're not going to complain. You're not going to try to rip him off of his money. You're going to say yeah. thank you. You're going to hand him his money and you're just going to do it. He knows He knows what needs done to get this done. He's not going to try to... But he also expects it not to cost as much money as he's budgeting for it. Because he says, he says I'm putting down $5,000 per truck as far as I'm concerned. And but each of the right. drivers has only been promised two thousand dollars, and that's all they're going to get if they make it. Two grand, right? You know, each driver. So, you know, and he's only expecting the reason he's sending two trucks is he's only expecting one to make it. So he's expecting at yeah. the most to pay four thousand, but he's already he's already said that ten thousand is what he what he's willing to give. <laughs> but four thousand, well, is all I, he expects you know, but to I give. mean that's that's. That's more, yeah. I mean, yes, I agree. Like, yeah. but he's that was a weird part, yeah. Also, that I had a little bit of trouble understanding what he was trying to say exactly. Uh huh. But in the end, I mean, I the way that the people he was working with reacted to the idea of just using the people from the town, yeah, to do this was like. It was just a really interesting Yeah, situation. I mean, they're like, well, why would you hire know-nothing bumpkins to do this? And, and he's, uh, because they'll do it. Um, yeah, and yeah, and if they don't succeed, nobody will care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Which is not noble, but no. I did like his little speech about, you know, and you'll pay them. Yeah. And you'll just and you'll accept pay them, it. And you'll accept it because it needs to be done. And it needs, it's not... It's not something that we can do any other way. So quit complaining about how we're doing it and just let it right, right. And that was that's what made it kind of <coughs> an, kind yeah. of a, kind of one of the more exciting moments for me in the story yeah. was just because it's like he got them to shut up. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, there there's an explosion at or a fire at a well some 300 mm-hmm. miles away on the other side of a mountain, and they've got to get nitroglycerin from the supply depot to. Which, the by fire. the way, is this oil company completely incompetent? Yeah, why wouldn't it, why wouldn't you have it there already? Why? Well, a and b, like, what, what, what you're running an oil derrick network without adequate transportation between air, the yeah. oil derricks? Yeah, are you just stupid? Or um, maybe they're just not thinking. They're not. They're not planning on there being a fire because they don't want. Yeah, there to but be a fire. even still, like they're. Their main headquarters yeah. is 300 miles away from a place from from the main well. Uh-huh. Now, I understand why they would have to do that because, like, maybe that's the nearest town. Yeah. But from what I've seen of – and the reason why I find this part less believable is because from everything I've understood about the operations of these kind of companies, day one they would have blown the mountain to hell. <laughs> and just made a straight line. Yeah, a full solid Because road. companies hate not having a straight line when you're dealing with this kind of, like, logistics, right? And so I found that a little bit like, why is it a 300-mile crazy road? 
I, I, I don't know. I mean, I could the washboard thing and stuff. I understand. That that was like, oh, okay. Well, it's not a very well built road. But yeah. then we started going through the mountain. I was like, yeah, I don't know about that, guys. It's not. It's not even a well, uh, well kept up road. It's just no one uses this road. Yeah, and and but that's kind of hard to believe since it's between the headquarters and the main dairy. Well, well, I feel like probably probably they fly. Um, yeah, I mean they do talk about airplanes and stuff. So, yeah, that, but I mean, they don't want to yeah, take I mean, they don't want to take an airplane because. Because it would ex- certainly explode. <laughs> it would certainly explode either on the runway or on the on the on the runway at one end or the other. This thing would explode. Um, but yeah, uh, which would have made for a very this? short film. Very, very short movie. Like five minutes. They try to because, load the plane. It either explodes. they blow up when the plane takes off, or we get a twenty-minute flight. And then they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or they actually make it and it's still only a 20 minute long. <laughs> yes. Everyone makes it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm just, I'm not complaining about the movie per se so much as like when I have to compare it to his other work. Yeah. It is, Diabolique is clearly better paced. Yeah. And that's all. I mean, that's my only major complaint. But, like the story is great. It's it is very suspenseful. Watching, I mean, for a movie that is basically dudes in a truck. Yeah, it is crazy suspenseful. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yeah, and that, you know, essentially, that's what the an hour and a half of the movie is. Yeah, it's four dudes in a truck. Four dudes in two trucks. But well, yeah, okay, two trucks. Sorry, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's good. The acting's yeah. well, good. I mean. The actors, you get into their roles and, like, who they are. And, like, yeah. we really get to see personalities yeah. change this and is, evolve. This is and that's very, quite nice. very deep character study on on what uh, life or death situation can do to desperate people. Um, yeah, and we do get a really interesting range of starting characters. We've got yeah. uh, we've got the one what, Dutch guy, yeah. I think it is, uh, who's... I feel like he's German, but maybe no, he's, he's Dutch. He's I'm not Dutch, sure. I think because he wouldn't necessarily be war- working. Uh, yeah, I think he's Dutch. I, somehow, okay. I think he's Dutch. I have it written he's, as the he's... Dutchman in my thing, but for some reason, in my mind, he's German. But I think just because he looks like the Aryan ideal, he's right? But he hair, also has a salt mine, so yeah, I'm pretty sure he's Dutch. Okay, so he and I think they call him the Dutchman at one point. So. Yeah. I think that's probably uh, why I wrote it. But <laughs> yeah, so he you've got him who already has nothing to lose in his mind. Like he's yeah. already been through hell. Yeah. And then like you know, that so and then we see his behavior and then yeah. You know, we've got Luigi who is really in this to live. Yeah, he's he's kind of a happy-go-lucky Italian guy, but at the same time he knows that he's just been to the doctor and he's got so much so much concrete dust in his lungs that he's going to die very soon if he does not get out of that town and find a right. job. Right, and so he has nothing to lose in a different sort of way. Like, yeah. he does this and succeeds or dies. Yeah. One way or the he other. Does, he's, he has nothing to lose, but not in a nihilistic way. Right. The Dutchman he's is... Not the, the, the yeah. Do, yeah, the Dutchman is a, is a nihilist because yeah. life has already been as bad as it can be. Yeah. Then we've got Mario and Joe, which is really interesting because Mario, you know, as oh, spoiler alert, he lives yeah. well most of the way, um, the longest. Um, yes. But like Joe is this tough dude in yeah. the town, and then just is just a completely live, like, piece of crap. In the, There's in actually the, there was the an truck. actor there was an actor who refused the role of Joe because he didn't want to portray a coward. Which is a very weird choice for an acting career, but at the same time, well, I understand. Yeah, I mean, that's, like that's, that's the kind of thing that could get you typecast, I guess. Yeah, yeah. As a it, well, well, it was, coward. it was. I can't remember his name, but he was, he was a well-known, well-liked French actor at the time. And he, yeah, and you know, it'd be like Joe John is, Wayne playing the playing the character. I think is right, and what we got to right, and if you're John Wayne, you wouldn't take this part either. Yeah, because exactly. that dude is a coward. He breaks down almost immediately. He's yeah. all talk. 
Yeah. And then you throw in, like, we've got, um, you know, Mario, who kind of evolves to become tougher as we go along. It's, that's weird. It's a, it's an, I, I like it, but it's also really kind of one of those kind of character movies where the character evolving is so complex that it's hard to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's. No, this is this is a movie about these guys, and it's so so wonderful. You know, the only one the only one who really doesn't go through any sort of change is the Dutchman, and that's just because he's always he's always at the point. Of, he's already ruined. He's, yeah, he's already, already ruined. not a, a person, really. Yeah, yeah. And and that's really I actually oh, yeah. it tore me up when the truck yeah. explodes. Yeah. When their truck explodes, I was like, yeah. really? Just because I liked Luigi so much. Yeah, really. me too. He's such a great character, and you're like, yeah. oh, you just killed him because. What, you didn't want us to experience you, joy? You killed him because we liked him. That's really... Yeah, it is. Kick, That's why he dies. He you dies kicked because, that dog right off the cliff. <laughs> like, he dies because we like him. Yeah. And the yeah. director knows we like him. Yes. And therefore he must die. Yeah. And then I, I, like, I like where, you know, we even get that... And we get that, like, 20 minutes after... 20 minutes after we avoided Luigi dying, where we thought Luigi probably just died because he made a really dumb decision. Yeah, right? And then, like... <laughs> and then Well, and then... And we've been following... Mario is the is clearly the main character, but we follow Luigi so much as well yeah. that he becomes a sort of secondary main yeah. character. Well, we meet to him the really point early where, since he's Mario's roommate. and Yeah, and yeah. to the point where you're like, oh, he's not going to die. Yeah, but then again, this movie's got a love of kicking yeah. us. This is pretty this hard is, because this is like a Josh Whedon movie. It's, I mean, like they don't. He the director does not care. Yeah, he does not love us. Yeah, because um, like I mean, I mean, well, I guess we have we talked already about the very end. No, right? No, we haven't. No, I mean, let's just get. We should just say like yeah. Well, first off, I want to I want to okay. say when when Luigi and the Dutchman blow up, uh, not only not only was that you know just a, a kick in the gut, but uh, I mean, totally out of nowhere too. Yeah, but the way it's filmed, where where the the we we're focusing on Mario and Joe, and they're just having a conversation, and like I think Mar- uh, Mario just lit a cigarette, and then there's just this flash. Yeah. And then we, then we, pa- they, they react, and then we go back, and, and there's a, a cloud, a cloud rising in front of them, and you know we know what happened, and then it's still you know five ten minutes before we even get to, the results of what happened, and when we do, the truck's nowhere to be seen. Everything's just gone. Oh, I know. It's just there's nothing. a hole in the ground, and it's just nothing. But yeah, um. And and in that, when they get to the hole um, that has been slowly filling with oil because one of the uh, the explosion sheared a pipeline, um, they need to drive through that oil. And Joe gets out to to clear it, clear the path, walk in front of the truck, and make sure there's nothing at the bottom. So he's pulling up tree limbs to toss them out of the way. Um, and try to get, keep the truck from getting stuck because the truck can't stop because it's oil. They're never going to right, get started. It will never, ever move again. Yeah. yeah. But Mario, at the same time, in attempting not to get stuck, can't care about what Joe's doing and ends up Right, ends up and it's a really over. weird yeah. scene that way because, like, yeah. you understand why Mario cannot stop. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, really? He's not going to stop? Yeah. Yeah. Especially this, as that plays out. Because this he movie can't. is kind of evil. Yeah. We, it can't, and we understand he can't. But at the same time, the results of him not being able to stop are that uh, he, he runs over he Joe. He kills Joe. Yeah, well, he I mean, eventually kills t- Joe. Well, it mean, takes time that Joe dies. Yeah, the, but if you shot that. Joe in the leg and he slowly bled to death, you still killed yeah. Joe. Yeah. yeah. So, so he so runs over, run over he his run, leg. Yeah. He runs over his leg and... and uh, you know, nearly drowns him in the oil, I would assume. <laughs> but but he gets out to the other side. They make it. He, he actually he gets stuck anyway for a little bit. But but he finally gets out, um, makes it out, and and goes back and gets Joe. 
and Joe is is very much, you know, he's not dead yet, but he's obviously about to be for the rest of the movie. Well, and that's the weird thing about this film, and, and right at that point, I kind of realize, at least in my mind, something about this film. Mm-hmm. Um, what the really in my me, and this, this, I could be wrong. Okay, this is just my interpretation. This film, in a lot of ways, is about how utterly senseless the death of all these people is. Yeah. Because everything that happens is avoidable if somebody just did a better job. And what I mean is, especially when we get to Joe's death, okay? And specifically how Joe's leg gets smashed. Mario cannot stop. Because somebody decided to put the pipeline right next to the road. Uh, and it blows up, right? And he can't stop. But then he gets stuck anyway and does a thing with the rope and the and the pins, right? The the big rods. Which yeah. brings us to the point where he didn't have to run over Joe because he could have just done that in the first place. Yeah. He could have stopped, got Joe out, and done that. But he didn't because in his mind somehow... And this is a kind of a weird thing that all of these characters are going through. They're in a race against a clock that doesn't actually exist. Yeah. They because don't that... care how... And Joe says yeah. this in, in a weird way. This is the only... He's the only one who's operating in a lot of ways sensically. Yeah. Which is weird because he's also the main coward. Yeah. Um, in that he says, I don't care how much oil they lose. Yeah. But the other characters are not operating in that well, that clear that clarity. And I understand Joe, everyone else's perspective. Joe realizes that they've got to cover the same distance, and and they've got and he wants to do it as cautiously as possible. Right. Everyone if it else, takes him two weeks to get yeah. that three hundred miles, he will. Yeah. Everyone else wants to take as long as or as short as possible because. They, they feel don't want like, to spend as that yeah, much time with a bunch of time. nitroglycerin. But but their chance of blowing up at any given moment is the same. So it doesn't really of, matter how yeah, long and it they goes last. Up, it actually goes up the faster they go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the weird thing is like it's it's about that fear yeah. that motivates them to go faster than they should. Yeah. We we don't really find out what kills Luigi and the Dutchman. Yeah, we don't. Because uh, um, they, w- when they die, we don't get the impression that they're being particularly reckless or anything. Yeah, and the and the weird part is when we get to that spot, it's like all flat before it and all flat after it. So, but there's no, you know, we can't see the results of what they actually hit. Um, yeah. There were some. There, I I guessed that maybe there was those trees were hanging low. Yeah. And 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 jostled stuff. But, you know, again, the movie doesn't tell us. Right, they don't, don't tell really us why they know. die. But, yeah. yeah, my point is simply that, like, we, it really became clear to me that this movie is more about that senselessness of it mm-hmm. and about how fear motivates you to do things that don't make sense. Yes. Uh, which would make sense as the title. But um, yeah. it doesn't really yeah, become clear to me. Fear what they were trying to say until I thought about the fact that Joe died for zero reason. Yeah. Not stopping Joe, didn't afford Mario any yeah. benefit. Yeah. Joe's car, Joe's cowardice didn't get him killed. It was, it was, um, Mario trying to hide his cowardice. Right. And, and it that seems got like the, a lot of the really dangerous situations they get into yeah. is that is people yeah. being, not yeah, they're they're yeah. responding to fear by being brazen. Yeah. Whereas Which Joe, is, you know, it's but, just, and I it's think just it's a, a different form of cowardice, it's, right? And it's weird because you get if you really think about Joe's character, you get this sort of like Joe is old enough to have lived this long and know that being brazen doesn't. It's weird because you see him being really brazen at other points. In the film. But when it comes to this, he knows that he's the only one who realizes that the, this behavior is not going to win him anything other than <laughs> blowing up. And it's weird. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, he's the only, like, sensical character. 
But we also hate him because he's a total sniveling coward. <laughs> it's weird. But he's also and that it's a and maybe maybe this movie is a lot deeper than I gave it credit for when I first watched, like now that I'm thinking about it, because it it's it makes us not like him, even though he's the only one who's acting in a lot of ways logically. Because when you yeah. watch these kind of like cowboys just going like living life on the seat of their by the seat of their pants sort of movies you expect those guys to be the guys who are the good guys, right? Like, I mean, if you watch like a, you know, and they don't die, you know what I mean? Like the Cowboys don't die. You know what I mean? They Mm -hmm. pull out of the last second and we even see Mario do that. But the, that fear that got into him, like that one guy says at the, the, at the place at the very beginning, at the at the headquarters, he says, I've seen what this kind of fear does to people. It, it, you know, it, it, you, even if you live, it stays with you forever. And it's kind of a... This movie is awkwardly paced, but really got a really interesting message built in here, apparently. Yeah. That I yeah. have only just now started thinking about. Yeah. Sorry, the, the entire audience gets to li- like listen to me realize oh, what this movie's about. That's that's fine. I I, I Well, I didn't have a lot of time. I, I watched it yesterday, but I didn't have a lot of time to process it. To really think about it, yeah. Yeah, and so now that we're talking, well, then, you know, talking to people about things is part of the processing experience. Yeah. And this is me going, wait a minute. This this movie is kind of because I imagine that a lot of the remakes took out that element. Because I, mean, I know when you watch the movie when you're just sitting down to watch the movie, what you think the movie is about. The movie seems like it is about an exciting trip over rough terrain in in a dangerous situation. Yeah. Right? It seems like kind of a just an action film, right? We've seen yeah. movies like this. They come out all the time. But this movie is not that. This movie is about what, how stupid and senseless fear makes you. Yeah. Which fits the title, but didn't really click for me. So, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and, and you know it's a very interesting way to go. And uh, you, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't there. Um, you know, you you taught me a thing there because I wasn't really getting the title until you started talking about right. That. Well, it, no, it it's, it's really it. it yeah. It's all there in the title, and then I just now realized yeah. that it's in the title. Didn't we have another moment like this, like? 20 episodes ago. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we, we did. I'm, we're, I'm sure it's happened before. We, did, where where we, we didn't understand the movie until we actually started. Oh, I remember what it was. The Lady Vanishes. Where yeah. we realized mid-episode that, that the dude who got strangled at the beginning was delivering the message. Yes. Yes. That's uh, what it was. That's what it was. Man, this podcast yeah, is the same too. really... Yeah. People are going to listen to this and be like, these guys are morons. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. We're just two guys talking about movies. Huh? That's true. And yeah, yeah so what was... if maybe we can't put two and two together? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we no. suck at math. Maybe maybe we suck at, you know, uh, cinema criticism. But who cares? Right, but uh, guess what? We have a podcast and you don't. So, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Let's not make fun of the audience. Uh, <laughs> Especially we're the dumb ones here. Basically it's fine. Free. They're, they're, we're the dumb ones. Um, <laughs> plus, anyone could. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's the yeah. joke. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna be, but I'm gonna be purposely antagonistic to this jerk audience for the rest of this episode <laughs> for thinking Bye. we're dumb. We are, we are. Yeah, it's, that, it's but, yeah. um. So yeah, uh, you know, it's not just the writing that that gets the suspense of this movie because that wouldn't make it a great movie, and this is a great movie. You know, this the cinematography too. Um, you know the the way it's shot. Um, I really like. There's there's one spot be, right before they blow up the rock with the nitroglycerin they, that the Dutchman has siphoned out of uh, one of the one of the barrels or one of the the cherry cans. They're not barrels. They're not that big. Um, but uh, and then we get this slow what, like, what moment? Zoom I, in. I need you to finish on everybody's everybody's individual reactions. We we just. Oh yeah, it like shows them and then zooms in slightly. Um, yeah, I just I just like that. I like there's there's a really great line. Joe's got a lot of great lines. You know, everybody's got a lot of great lines. But what he talks about, uh, 
how he needs to be there um, because it's the division of labor. Uh, Mario drives and Joe worries. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's up. a really good line. <laughs> yeah, that's a great line. And you know, it's 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 true because someone needs to be worrying. Uh, right, because well, no and one then, worries, like, and, and then, that's that's what. Yeah, that's what gets people killed. Is that lack is, of worry? Yeah, is that nobody in the car is concerned? But yeah. that is exactly it's, it's, what it's, gets people killed throughout yeah. the entire. Yeah, and it's like it's like the 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 lesson of the of the lesson Batman learns in in the latest Chris Nolan movie is you know you can't uh, the fact that he's not afraid of death is it's is not an what's holding him back. Yeah, it's not an advantage. You need to have that fear of death because it, it's what pushes you. Um, so you know. And everybody here is afraid of death, obviously, but no one's, everyone's, everyone but Joe is trying to ignore their fear of death. Right, right. They're, and pretend they're, that, they're pretend that they're not afraid of death. In that sort of macho, yeah. brazen way. And yeah. That, yeah. 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 Although so. I want to point out that, like, I, this is just a weird thought I had when I was watching it. Okay, so you know the scene where the, the where the, um, the Dutchman is siphoning off his, uh, off the nitroglycerin? I yeah. could, you know, what the first thought that popped into my head was, "Oh, that's coming when out of his." When he spits it out, it's going to blow up. No, no, <laughs> no. no. no I, my thought was, "Oh, that's coming out of his pay." Yeah, they're gonna I like was, they're I, gonna charge him for the nitroglycerin yeah. that he used. Well, he had the smaller truck anyway, so it's. I I I I did half expect at the end, uh, for for Mario just to go crazy and drive it straight into the fire. Me too. Um, I'm glad you felt that way too. I was like, I'm glad that didn't keep driving. I'm very glad that didn't happen, but but at the same time, I I almost almost thought it was. There are so many moments in this in this movie. We kind of we move from once they start driving, we move from moment of uh, you know, sort of an episodic moment. Yeah, of suspense, they're weird. You know? Like kind of, yeah. you could almost like call them like tableaus of stress. Yeah, so you know, it's it starts off with with the trucks pulling away and the the clearance is like you know a matter of inches, and then our next moment is when the uh, when Mario Mario and and the Dutchman have I really can't remember his name Luigi and the Dutchman rather uh, have had had to stop on the washboard. Well, you road. just the being road racist, is, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The washboard road is is itself you know a moment of suspense, but but then they had to stop, so now they. Now they have to go under six miles per hour because your choice on the washboard because go how very slow or go it's very, go very fast. slow or go very fast and and Mario driving the other or Mario's insistence in the other truck is that they are they should be taking it very fast when they had when Joe had originally said no we have to take it slow and that's why he let the other people buy um, and well, they almost and then run we into get him. into that whole thing about yeah. Joe right from the beginning like and it, yeah. it 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 didn't click earlier like we said but like Joe is right yeah. there's no reason you need to do it at 40 yeah other than your fear yeah you could just do it at 6 miles an hour and yeah and it'll take, take days yeah but... you'll get there like 2 weeks from now but they're not paying you to get there fast they're paying yeah. their, you they're to, paying to get, you get there. there and like that whole thing is like yeah, it's just, you know, it, we get into that thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, he's yeah. right. Why do you want to do this at 40? And they even back up so that they can do it at 40. Yeah. But there's no need for yeah. it. And they need, and they, they very weirdly, I mean, they're putting themselves in extra danger to try to back up all the way. Right. Because they have to back up around along the exact same path that they just drove, like, not even an inch off. Yeah. They have to back up. Well, and they've already become um, the second place truck, so they could literally yeah. just do yeah. it at six miles an hour and it would have no effect. Yeah. And it's not it's not like it's a race between them. If they get right. there, they're still going to get paid. Right. It's... They get paid what's in the truck. Yeah. If they make it alive. Yeah. You know. I mean I mean I guess I suppose if one truck showed up super early and the fire was out by the time the other truck got there, they might try to screw them out of yeah pay. but it didn't sound but, like that was going to happen so. but it doesn't yeah it doesn't feel like that's going to happen like they, I think they the hedge Americans, their bets with two trucks because yeah. they want yeah they, they wanted, wanted to, to get there the Americans for all of their their we get the impression that the boss evilness, is going to be 
honest yeah, about he's this. At least, yeah, he's at least going to... He feels like he's at least going to be honest about this. But yeah, there's the the episodic nature of their of their big events. You know, then we have the bridge, then we have the rock they have to blow up, then we have the the pool. Um, uh, it 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 keeps that. You know, it's 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 like a heartbeat of the. You know, it never it never dies completely out. Well, and I think that's kind little, of one of my problems shocked. with the pacing of it, is because yeah. of the way that's done. We mm. kind of in my. It didn't, almost those didn't happen at a clip that was quite fast enough. Yeah. So they even kind of felt a little That's, boring. Okay. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, I, I, I can understand where you're coming like, from. Well, because like, if they wanted to show that tension, right? That's the, right? We're talking about fear, right? It did, yeah. We didn't need to have as many as we had. Does it make sense? Or we could yeah. have done them with a little bit less time in between because most of the character development happens at each of those scenes. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's, I just found the movie slow. And despite the fact that I thought it was really good and I liked all that in the end, that was one of my biggest problems is like, man, this is slow. Maybe if they just cut out the first half an hour, I don't know. Because <laughs> that was maybe. a bit boring, but I, you know, I just think like yeah, we we still needed it. The love story, the lo- whole love story aspect was a little needless, but right, especially at the same since, time, especially it was, since they knew that they were going to kill him. Yeah, I, uh, well, yeah, but at the same, but at the same time, if if we hadn't had a little more humanization for Mario, he just seems like this faceless grunt hero that you know just is great. Um, but he kind so we of have feels to, that we way have to me a lot anyway. Like, yeah, but, in the end, like, I don't really feel like yeah. he's a hero at the end. Like, even yeah. before he but dies. The, I don't feel like, yeah, oh, po- look at how amazing this thing he did yeah. is. Yeah, well, well, the point of it is to is to get us hints of that, you know, prior. You know, he completely, whatever her name is, the girl played by Barry, Oh, I don't but, know. But Does I she have a name? actual name. She might not. I don't no, know. I'm what, sure she does, but I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. It's not used enough to actually remember what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of um, hey girl but, and stuff like that. And, but yeah, he, and she's just using her. And even in like the introduction, when he when we first see them together, she literally like crawls across the floor and he pats her on the head. It's Oh, I know. It's disgusting. Know, it's, it's disgusting and it's terrible how... how he treats but this, that's the thing is that woman. kind yeah. of made me at the beginning not really like him, which yeah. makes the entire things that unfold at the end mean like I'm basically watching this guy I don't really like. Yeah, put it you know put his life at risk, and so yeah, it, I this movie's very confusing. <laughs> you know what I mean, though, right? Like, it's really hard yeah. to cope with because he's not really a nice guy. You don't really want him to succeed because he's not, like, a hero. Well, I want him to succeed because I don't want him to die. Right, but that's not the same, right? Yeah. That's, like, he's, he's I don't not, want he's not to like, die. He's not like the guy in the last right, movie. Right, where we're where, waiting where for him to die. Week. We're like, yeah. okay, T yeah. minus nine minutes until he dies. Uh, yeah. But at the same but, time, but yeah. I'm not. I'm certainly not really super invested in him living, because he's a he's a d bag. Yeah, and he's yeah. pretty obviously he like in the way he talks to Joe about her yeah. and stuff. It's just it's disgusting, and yeah, and it's supposed to make him. I I think the idea is to make him not really lovable. Yeah, to show that like. Because if he were a proper hero, the things that happens along the way yeah. would feel too much like what heroes do, rather than yeah. what people and, who are scared out of their minds do. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of talk in in some of some of the you know, material I've seen on this movie of the possibility of of Mario having uh, a crush on Joe. Um, or, or the two of them being in a subtle homosexual relationship, and I don't even get that. You know? Yeah, I don't think it's that much. I think it's just like Joe because is. Yeah, I don't. I yeah. feel. I feel like Mario always views Joe as the possibility of a ticket out. Exactly. Because Joe shows up and looks rich, 
and he can, and he's French, so, you know, they have that going for them. And, and he can, at the very least, he looks rich enough that he can use him for drinks for a while. Well, and I, I kind of also read it as, I haven't seen another Frenchman in a really long time. Yeah, And so we're exactly. going to be friends regardless of how much of a D-bag I am. Yes. And how much of a D-bag you too. are. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> on the suspense of this movie, I actually have a, I have a quote from the New York Times critic Bosley Crowther at the time. Uh, he just says, he says, you, uh, you sit there waiting for the theater to explode. Uh, which I think really... That, accurate. That's accurate. Like, I mean, like, I really imagine also that, like, this would be a radically different experience if I saw it in a theater. Yes. Than yes. me sitting on my laptop true. in my kitchen. Yeah. In your in your in your two foot by two foot kitchen. Yeah, in my dining my dining area. <laughs> yeah. Like while my son watches Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh <laughs> like it really has a feel that like if everybody else in the room were holding their breath with you, it would be much more intense. Yeah. And that's unfortunately not an experience we're gonna be able to replicate. Like Diabolique was suspenseful in its own right to the point where I could have been watching it on an airplane and enjoyed it. Yeah. This one really feels like you almost need to share it with other people. Yeah. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. You like every time they get out you need to hear everybody sigh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody then, gasp. Everybody yeah. and everybody when, like, leaning forward. Right. And then when um. the when the when those the Dutchman and, and Luigi explode that like have everybody go, Huh? Because it's out of nowhere, right? Yeah. I feel like maybe this is a better movie that I give it credit for because I didn't watch it in the right situation. Maybe, maybe. Like, maybe. I mean, it's a great movie. No, I, I don't mean it's a bad movie. It's just that I found it... Yeah, I mean... Uh... But then again, like, that's another thing, right? Like, if you make a movie that is only enjoyable in a theater, that's a problem, too. Like, I mean, I guess it's not at the time when there's no home video. Yeah. But in a, in, for modern people, a movie that doesn't hold up watching it on your own is a bit off-putting. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, Adam, you should fly to Japan every week and we'll record, we'll watch the movies watch, together. Watch all these movies together. And then we'll record um, the podcast feels like it might be a little expensive and time consuming. Well, that's why we need advertisers. <laughs> oh, okay. Extremely yeah. wealthy advertisers who do not know the worth of their own product. Yes, that. I don't think that's going to happen. No. That. But, you know, I mean, I think that's something we need to realize is that sometimes these movies were not meant to be watched the way we watch them. Yeah, no, I think I think you're absolutely right. This movie this movie definitely needs to be watched on a big screen with mm. or at least with a crowd and of that, people. And what he says about the theater exploding, I can totally see yeah, because everybody's going to be feeling that suspense, right. and seeing this seeing this in a theater is it would be a very different experience. You're absolutely so we right. should try to do that. We should try um, to see us in a theater. <laughs> maybe maybe when when you're when you're in America for Christmas, we'll, I'll find a copy. We'll rent a theater. And we'll rent out. We'll rent out a theater. There's a dollar theater in Mansfield that probably rents, I bet they do. You know, they do for birthday a couple parties hours for cheap. I know they do. They do birthday yeah. parties. There we go. We'll, we'll invite we everybody we know and a bunch of people we don't know, yeah. so we can fill up the theater. Yeah. We'll just we'll just we'll put a sign out front free that movie. says this movie free today. We'll have everybody come in. We'll all watch it, and, we'll, um, and, and then, then we'll be arrested leave. because we just totally they'll violated. immediately leave in the first. <laughs> they'll immediately leave in the first three seconds because that naked little boy playing with the, with the uh, cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's all right. We well, and never mind the fact that we'll be sued out of our minds for publicly showing a film. <laughs> Although for wait, free. I don't yeah. know. Eh, let's not get into copyright discussions. Yeah, yeah. No, we'd definitely be breaking the law. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, there's no there's no uh there's no argument there. But let's uh, do but yeah. it. Uh, let's do it. Just so we can um, confirm our suspicions that. about this film that we're not gonna revisit. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, Let's waste. Anyway, we've talked about this for three. nearly an hour. Yeah. So. How did this end up being such time, a long episode? I, I think it's time to kind of cycle down. Um, but yeah, this is this is a wonderful movie. Uh, we didn't really touch on it 
as much as as we could have but the uh if it's anti-American, it's just it's anti-humanity, and the Americans are are perhaps especially evil. But it's only because there's more of them, and they're in a position of authority. Right, um, like you could you every, could easily replace Americans with yeah. uh, Nazis in this situation. It would be yeah. the same every, story. Everyone's a jerk here. Everyone's a jerk here, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, it's it's yeah the jerk is a great in the movie sea of jerks. Uh, yeah, is not yeah. have a lot of meaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway. Uh, great movie. Watch it with a friend. Movie. Is what I would recommend. Watch it with, watch it with at least one friend because multiple reactions are going to make it much more so much impactful. Better. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, so if, it, if if you weren't feeling this movie, go back. Yeah, um, I'll try to. I'll try to force people, my son to watch it with me. Yeah, yeah. Right, watch a two it and a half your, year old should your, love this film. It, yeah, he'll probably uh, walk away. Yeah, play with his <laughs> Thomas toys. Uh, yes. <laughs> Next week we are watching the 1980 oh, fantasy so film from Terry Gilliam, uh, the uh, uh, Time Bandits, uh, and Pat's very excited. I'm very excited. We should have made my movie. dad a special and guest. We should have, but it's too late dad for that. Is. Unless you think, I mean, he's probably away. He, I know he's on Skype, um, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll we'll see you next yeah. week. Thanks for listening. Yeah. to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lost